Hi, good evening. I'm hoping you're able to see this. I'm not able to see you for some reason. Um, anyway, we're here to talk about the prevention of colon cancer through colon cleansing. And this March is, happens to be, National Colorectal Cancer Awareness Month. Uh, this was an edict that was started uh, by President Clinton back in the year 2000. March being the National Awareness Month for Colorectal Cancer. And given hence this title, I am glad to be here to share with you uh, some pointers some info to get you informed. I want to thank you for being on this webinar to get informed about this process to prevent cancer. This is my intention of this webinar, to get you informed um, so that we can prevent this from happening in your life. Uh, the National Colorectal Cancer Awareness Month, uh, Awareness Month is, is important to have this early detection is the key to all of this. And I will be showing you also today the connection with not only diet, but also uh, the estrogen dominance that most women and men have that uh, with being estrogen positive increases the chances and risks for cancer in your life. Uh, and we'll be going over some uh, things that you can do personally to prevent cancer and to keep your colon moving and keep it uh, regularly moving between two to three times every day. And optimally, within one hour of eating, one should be eliminating not what you ate, but what you just then and there, but what you had eaten maybe probably 24 hours ago to 48 hours ago is now moving through your body. And that's ideal uh, to eliminate two to three times per day. That will keep your health and um, together and you will stay vibrant as you age. The, one of the important things to consider is that the, when women are estrogen positive, they increase the, the risk because we must get the elimination working. They work in conjunction. Uh, through elimination, and if it's not eliminating correctly, then uh, your bowels aren't moving enough, the estrogens are being recycled, and toxins are being recycled in your body. So the most important thing is to get your elimination working so we can reduce the chances of cancer in as, as of cancer occurrence. Uh, in talking with uh, one of the cancer uh, doctors, oncologist um, several years ago, who had attended one of our IAC meetings, um, it was mentioned that uh, in her practice, she had also seen 100% of her clients as um, cancer and patients, and 100% uh, of them had constipation issues. So there is a correlation to having constipation, and that is the, the most important thing to get rid of toxin buildup in your body through your elimination. Now, here's some of the ways you can effectively keep your colon clean. If you are using fiber, additional fiber, because we don't always get it through the foods we eat. And in the diet, if it's a diet, um, usually have a high content of meats, 
uh, high protein, animal protein, and the way you cook it also affects uh, the ability to receive cancer or not. Because uh, if you're frying your foods, are you char, char grilling your foods? That's um, the, the amount of char that's on the meats also contribute not only though it's savory in taste, it's also contributing possibility of cancer because of the carcinogenic effects of the char on the animal protein that lends to chemically changing the structure of the food, but at the same time, it's adding chemicals to your body. And the oils that you're using, what you're cooking with, so you wanna make sure it's either olive oil along the lines of um, something that is, uh, an omega-3 or 6 type of oils that's good for your body and helps the viscosity of arteries and everything to move through. And also we have uh, the digi digestive enzymes. That is key because as we age, we are not utilizing enough of our own. There is not enough production of our own digestive enzymes within us. As we age, we lessen that ability. If we're stressed, we lessen our ability to produce more digestive enzymes for ourselves. And so we need to supplement uh, with the use of digestive enzymes to, uh, while we're chewing is very important in the beginning process of digestive aiding the process of, of, of breaking down the food. Supplemental digestive enzymes will be useful, um, particularly if you're under stress. Uh, you're also creating acids and acidity in your body, even if you're not eating. But with the use of digestive enzymes, that will also help you to process the foods further and break it down and it'll move through you much quicker and it'll accelerate the time from the time you eat to the time you eliminate. Uh, that is what's really important here. Accelerating the time from the time you eat to the time you eliminate. Because the stagnation in your colon, and here's an example. If you are in a course of a week, if there are three meals a day that you're eating, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Multiply that out by seven days, that's a total of 21 meals. And if you're only eliminating, but once a day, subtract seven eliminations in a week, where are the other 14 meals going? It's stagnating exactly in and putrefying within the gut. So by a accelerating and speeding up the time of elimination with the use of fiber, uh, with the use of digestive enzymes as a supplement, that's also gonna help uh, move everything through you so that the toxins will not be building up and the putrefaction in your gut will not be building up. And then recycling all those toxins back into your bloodstream. So this is key to accelerating that and to preventing cancer. Also probiotics, creating the right microbiome within your gut to fight off any bacteria. If you've eaten any bad food or gotten any kind of um, bacteria, let's say if you didn't eat a particular, wash the fruit before you ate, and there might have been some bacteria on it. As it works through your system, the microbiome from the gut, the flora is the most important thing that's going to fight that. And that's your first line of defense. So it's important to have the right microbiome with the right probiotics. This is so important. Uh, eating, of course, cleaner. So if you're eating your proteins, your animal proteins, be it chicken, beef, uh, turkey, or lamb, or tofu, 
you want to also combine the vegetables with it. Lessen on the heavier starchy foods like breads, uh, rice, potatoes, kind of cut back on those things. Those are binding agents when you combine uh, the heavy proteins of animal proteins with starches and breads. That's, those are real binders in the gut that will keep you clogged and slow the bowel down from eliminating. So if you eat more cleanly, uh, fruits, vegetables, having five to seven different vegetables and fruits throughout the day and combining in your meals, animal protein mixed with vegetables, that's eating pretty clean. Um, and if you are a vegetarian, certainly uh, staying within uh, the vegetable lines and less on the carbs. Uh, so even vegetarians can get clogged. So uh, we, that combination of cheese with uh, uh, heavy carbs breads and, and um, white flour products can also clog as well, even though you're a vegetarian. So we do want to, unless you're eating vegan and that's totally raw, then you've got plenty of fiber moving through there. And of course, drinking one half of your body weight in ounces per day so that you are getting the right amount of water so for example, if you're 150 pounds, 75 ounces is one half of that weight of 150 pounds in ounces of water per day is the minimum. You certainly can drink more water too, and that will also help to hydrate your body and move things through. Now in your colon is where water is being re-extracted for the body to use cellularly. So it's important to be hydrating your body, uh, having plenty of water to help move things through your colon as well. And so you're staying hydrated. That is the key. So in the to help also with the idea of prevention of cancer. Uh, diet is key. Looking how you're preparing your proteins, uh, if you're frying it or char grilling it as we talked about earlier. You might even looking at even steaming foods uh, as another alternative way of doing things also. And, um, or even broiling so that some of the fats are being removed. Um, exercise, of course, is f very important, as particularly with sedentary lifestyles and obesity. Two are, they, these are the two things that add additional risk factors for a colorectal cancer. And once again, the physical activity uh, helps to reduce our risk factor um, for any other types of diseases too. Uh, but So exercise is vital to get our circulation moving and our blood moving. Uh, also, if you're a smoker and there's heavy alcohol use, those two things can also lend towards increase, increasing the risk of cancer. And of course, there is the family history. If there is a propensity in your family towards cancer, it puts you at risk because if you are eating along the same lines as your family once taught you as you were growing up, some things have to change. If you're not changing the diet, then it could lend to that family history of uh, having colorectal cancer. And here's a story for you. Several years ago, I had a gentleman come in his father had colon cancer, so he was mindful of this. And he would come to see me at least three times a year. And it was like once every uh, four months. 
and do an irrigation just to maintain. And he did that for several years in a row. And then he decided he wanted to live the life of a Frenchman, uh, sold his, pra his uh, practice here, and moved to France for 14 months. And during that time, he sort of ate and drank and lived the life of a Frenchman, as he always wanted to do. Uh, but when he returned, he called me up and he said, Natalie, there's something going on. I can't simply eliminate my bowels well. I need to come in and see you. So when he did, um, I barely could get in 20 ounces of water into him. And upon palpation, that's feeling the abdomen, I said, you know, there's something here. And I took his hand to feel it on his body. And it was on his descending colon, about the first 12 inches of it. And I said, do you feel this lump? It's about the size of a lemon. He says, you know, now that you've just brought it up to my attention, I do feel it. I never felt it before. I never even thought about um, feeling my abdomen here. And so he says, you know, I think this is a bigger problem. So uh, I want you to go and see a gastroenterologist. So I referred him to two gastroenterologists, and he picked one of them. And uh, he called me up in two weeks, and he says, Natalie, he says, I have good news and bad news. I said, tell me the bad news first. He says, first of all, the lump you've detected um, ends up being colon cancer. And that's the bad news. The good news is that I do not have to wear a bag. Uh, there is a way for them to cut that section out and do a colon resection and do an anastomosis, which will tie my intestine down to the rectum so I won't have to wear a bag. I said, when is your surgery? And he says, next week, Tuesday. I said, okay, where will you be? And I happened to have to tell me the hospital it was, and I was living in Long Beach at that time. So I stopped in after my tennis game in the morning, and I saw him after his surgery, and he was sitting up, he was chipper, he was laughing and kibitzing around. And um, so I left thinking everything was fine. And um, by the weekend, I had left for an out-of-town conference, and when I got back to my office on Monday morning, there was a recorded message. And the recorded message said, oh, uh, we're having a memorial service for him. And I said, what? Oh my goodness, how can this be? So I called uh, up his girlfriend, and I said, how can this be? I just saw him on uh, uh, Thursday, and he was seen fine. It says by Saturday, septus, sepsis set in and it hit his brain and it killed him. Mm -hmm. So one of the trickier surgeries happens to be colon or rectal cancer. And because there's so much bacteria that you're working with in this area that it could easily uh, get into the bloodstream. That's what it had happened by the weekend. And so when it hit his brain, it killed him. Um, I attended his um, memorial service because it was a long-term client and I really like this person. And um, I am, till this day, am mindful that how important the work that I do, because if it weren't brought to his attention in the first place, it would have eventually worked its way into a greater problem. Um, but unfortunately, the sepsis took over his body and um, it did kill him in the end. So this is preventable colon cancer. This ranks the third most frequent cancer among the US population. And 75% of the US population, according to US News, back in 1998, 
75% of our population are constipated. And it is coming back to the diet and the way we eat and our lifestyle. I'm hoping that this story has enlightened you so that being informed and that you can take those various steps on your own uh, to take in fiber on a daily basis, morning and night, at least twice a day, and you'll see two to three bowel movements per day. The digestive enzymes we talked about and the probiotics to create the right microbiome for the gut health to thrive and colonize. So that will protect you and it's your first line of defense. And of course, eating more cleanly. Uh, and all of this will be prevention, including coming to see me should you decide to do some colon cleansing, and you know yourself well. If you know your eliminations have changed, they're not moving as more fluidly as it's possible or as regularly, um, then you need, there is a buildup within the colon that's happening, and be it six months to a number of years, uh, you need to come in and get a maintenance treatments to clear out and start over so that you will be able to be much more vibrant again. You know, after 31 years of doing this work, there was a time back when I first started 31 years ago, that cancer was an occasional thing that I would hear about. And it would be limited to somebody over the age of 65 that was having cancer. And today, given the lifestyle, the fast foods, the on-the-go lifestyle that everyone has, we're so busy. Uh, we're finding much more cancer cases happening, and it's happening to younger people. I just heard of another case just the other day, and uh, a 30 year old, and then uh, a 43 year old that recently came to my office. Um, so by the time that you come to see me, if the cancer, if it's already there in your colon, it's a little too late for colon irrigation or colon hydrotherapy. Um, so come and see me as a preventive measure so that we can get you healthy, cleared, and cancer-free of, and prevent that from happening through colon hydrotherapy maintenance. And I, if you have any questions, you can always call me. I'll be happy to answer some of your questions and know that I am here. It is my intention to keep you healthy and well, and your health matters to me. Thank you.